In our Sunrise Smart Start, Congress returns today, and the Senate is already starting to prepare for President Biden's Supreme Court pick. The president said he plans to announce his pick by the end of February and wants to keep a key campaign promise of nominating a black woman. We are joined by Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson, live in D.C. this morning. Rashad, good morning. What are Democrats in the Senate saying about this opening on the high court? Good morning. Democrats say they want to move fast on this nomination and use a similar process that Republicans use to confirm Justice Amy Coney Barrett. Now, Dick Durbin, the Senate Judiciary Chairman, the senator from Illinois, says that that will all depend on if that nominee has come before the Judiciary Committee before. That means that this person would have already been vetted. So it's going to depend on the nominee as to how quick this person can get moved through the Senate. Rashad, thank you. And is there any opposition from Republicans to the president's announcement? Well, several Republican senators are already lining up in their opposition against this person who has not been named. Some are saying that they have an issue with the president already coming out, announcing that he's going to uh, select a black woman, saying that many of them are comparing this to affirmative action, calling the process already tainted and political. They don't like that the president has already put that qualification or specific um, characteristic of the person out there, but Democrats say that they believe that a handful of Republicans will support whomever the president chooses. All right, Rashad, thank you so much for your time this morning. And President Biden said he'll consult with leading scholars and attorneys in the selection process, adding Vice President Kamala Harris will play a critical role. Well, in other news, Americans from Virginia to Maine still digging out after warming up after this weekend's blizzard. The storm dumped close to two feet of snow on Boston. Delayed air, delayed air travel caused power outages and prompted warnings about frigid temps in several states. Turning now to the latest on COVID-19, the Rochester City School District will be implementing a test to stay policy beginning today. Under the new policy, unvaccinated students exposed to COVID-19 will be allowed to stay in school as long as they test negative. Students who test to stay will be able to attend class, but they will not be able to participate in extracurricular activities for 10 days following the exposure. Well, the CDC adding more destinations to its list of high-risk places to travel. Some of the countries, the new ones, include Colombia, Costa Rica, Fiji, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic. The CDC discouraging Americans from traveling to these places due to high transmission rates of the coronavirus. The agency also advises that if you do go to these locations, you are fully vaccinated. The locations on this list have seen more than 500 cases per 100 per, per 1,000 residents in the past 30 days. In Beijing, more than 100 new COVID cases have been confirmed just days ahead of this year's Winter Olympics. Officials say the positive test came from the Olympic personnel arriving from other countries. Athletes are currently being kept away from the public inside the Olympic Village. Media and staff members are being kept in their own bubble as well. The opening ceremony is scheduled for Friday at 6 a.m. Well, uh, race walking is a uh, summer Olympic sport, but uh, with these temperatures, mm -hmm. maybe it's uh, good for this time of year too, James. Yeah, I think so. I want to get that uh, walk in. We're moving a little bit quicker than we might normally. It feels like zero with those temperatures around 10, and you had a little bit of a wind in there, so certainly a bitter cold start, but a nice finish. A lot of sun. I'm thinking by this afternoon, maybe all blue this morning they'll certainly be nice upper 20s to right around 30 degrees to finish the day we've got even more warm air to uh continue this week tuesday and wednesday but that's before potential for a big storm uh, that i'll talk about at the end of the show mark alley all right uh, james thank you we'll uh, look forward to that in the meantime let's check the roads with our sunrise traffic and uh, again a live view of things along 390 by the airport uh, Decent volume at this hour, but you can see uh, traffic flowing well in both directions there. Uh, some slowing. There's an accident at 390 South at exit 11. That's West Henrietta Road, so not too far from this view. At last check, 490 and 590 are up to speed. One firefighter was sent to the hospital after an apartment fire in Rochester. This happening around 2.30 Sunday morning on West Main Street. No update on that firefighter's condition this morning. 
Officials say five units had to be evacuated above a local mini mart. The Red Cross is helping six adults and three children. The cause of that fire is still under investigation. Happening today, State Senator Jeremy Cooney will be in Rochester to announce newly introduced public safety legislation. Senator Cooney says he and other local leaders have prioritized investing in the revitalization of neighborhoods around the city. Today's address will take place at 1030 on the corner of Herald and North Streets. That's the location of a homicide in which a 14-year-old boy was shot and killed earlier this month. Rochester police are investigating after a man was hit by a car in the city. Officers responding to Orange and Grape Streets around 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. They say the 30-year-old man was taken to the hospital and is being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Mayor Malik Evans wants the community to help decide who has the qualities and characteristics necessary to be Rochester's next police chief. Mayor Evans will be hosting four virtual community input sessions you can see on your screen. Those are over the next two weeks. Each session will be dedicated to topics of concern for each quadrant of the city. Registration for the sessions not required, but to find the Zoom link, you can head to cityofrochester.gov slash RPD search. Well, a Rochester man is searching for his dog and his car after both were stolen over the weekend. The six-month-old puppy was in Eric Berg's parked SUV Saturday evening. Berg says in less than 60 seconds, that car was stolen with his dog right on the front seat. It happened at the corner of East and Alexander. As Berg had stopped to grab some takeout, the pet owner says he regrets ever leaving his pet alone in the running car. I understand that this was a crime of opportunity, and I have regret over having allowed that opportunity to occur. Um, and maybe the person who did it is feeling regret as well, but they have a chance to just, um, to just give up the dog for $2,000. Well, Berg has posted flyers around the city and is urging anyone with information to contact him or call 911. Rochester police are helping with the search. A new state law will require the Department of Health to collect county-level data on alcohol overdoses and share the findings annually. Over the past decade, health officials say the focus has been on opioid addiction, accounting for 70% of all drug overdoses in 2019. However, other drugs, including alcohol, come with their own concerns. One study says alcohol is the third leading preventable cause of death in the United States. And health officials say having access to alcohol overdose data can bring help to those in need. Here's what uh, a lot of folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. The matchup is set for Super Bowl 56. The Cincinnati Bengals will take on the LA Rams at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles coming up on February 13th. The Bengals launched an incredible comeback yesterday against the Kansas City Chiefs while the Rams beat their division rival the San Francisco 49ers. This will be the second consecutive year that a team could win the Super Bowl in its home stadium. You know, we talked about it earlier on the show. Uh, Bills fans have just got to be feeling just mm. miserable this morning. Mm -hmm. Salt in the wound to see the Bengals yeah. get past the Chiefs. Yeah. Tough. It's, it, does it come down to game planning? I mean, the two games were so different, mm -hmm. right, from another. And uh, so we will see certainly uh, how uh, people feel about that game. We've got two weeks to talk about it. Yes, we uh, do. So plenty uh, to look forward to with that. If you're looking forward to sunshine, we've got that today. Sunrise at 727 this morning uh, and uh, really a good finish in the upper 20s to around 30 degrees. I don't think we break freezing today, but we likely will uh, the next couple days. I've got us in the mid to upper 30s Tuesday, around 40 on Wednesday, and then big changes. Potential for some sleet and heavy snow Thursday, Thursday night, and into Friday. Accumulating snow, potential for a major snowstorm here mm. as we wrap up the month of uh, January and head into February. All right, James, thank you so much for that, and thank you for joining us on News 8 at Sunrise this morning. Yeah, our next update coming up in about 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next. Have a great day.